sewing friends, I'm Karina from Lifting Pins and Needles. Thank you for joining me today. And I have been on a pant making trip, obsession if you will. Um, I think in late June I purchased the Mountain View pull-on jeans by Itch to Stitch. Um, I saw a couple months ago Myra from My Lor Lorraine. Um, she was gushing about the pattern and she showed her version and yeah, she's totally enabled me to buy the pattern for myself, you know, the pattern. Uh, so yeah, thanks Myra. <laughs> I cut them out at that period but then I never got around to sewing them in the rest of June, July and just now I got around to making them. So these are very cool because they look like normal jeans when you wear them, but they are secret pyjamas. So the features of these um, jeans are that they pull on. That's the most important feature. You just pull them up, no zippers, anything like that. There's a thick contoured waistband around you, a straight leg. There are functional front pockets, normal functional pockets. And then at the back there's um, back patch pockets and there's a yoke um, yeah so that those are the features of the pants the pattern comes in sizes double zero to 20 I believe I've got this written down so it will take you from a hip to 33 and a half to 48 so that is like the size range that this pattern has now I'm going to insert size charts here I always do that to show you how I got to the one that I wanted the feet that I wanted so um, you can see on the red circles there my size 14 and the measurements there and then on the blue you can see the finished garment measurements are slightly smaller because there is negative ease on a stretch denim pant um, the waist has a one and a half inch negative ease and the hips a three inch negative ease um, on the pattern there are lots of lengthened and shorter lines at the hip mid thigh at the knee there's lots you know if you need to make adjustments there are lines there to show you and as always in the instructions you always have a guide you know as to how to make those adjustments to fit you but anyway i want to show you how easy it was to make these pants and i have filmed um the process for you you're gonna just want to go and make them because they're just so easy the first couple of steps involve the pockets so these are the pocket linings i'm using this crazy print you put the right sides together to match the curve there on both uh, we're going to sew that, flip it around, and then top stitch, and then that part will be finished, you know, like that. And then with the other part of the pocket that goes at the back, you see you've got your denim that matches your main fabric. Uh, I'm going to overlock this on the edge, and then I'm going to sew that on the, on the edge there onto this pocket. Do that on both sides. I really don't want my pockets to be flipping forward so I'm under stitching after I've already sewn that curve and clipped that curve inside I'm going the extra mile and under stitching then I've turned it around I've pinned everywhere and I'm going to do that double row of top stitching with a golden thread so it looks nice and once I've done that I've put the other piece of the pocket on top of that right sides together the pockets I have to unite those serge and sew and then the pockets are going to be united there you can see the pockets are taking shape um, now I have to baste all that up on the top and on the sides so that the pockets aren't flapping everywhere and then I can treat those as just one completed piece the pocket uh, didn't take too long it's already top stitched it's all basted here on the side you can see there it's all done so I can forget about that I can just treat this as one piece now and now I'm going to put right sides together of the pants here and this is a four fly front so from that notch mark i'm going to sew down and just close up that crotch there so i've sewn up that uh, front crotch seam i've overlocked the edges as well and now i'm just going to open this i'm going to leave the flap this way i'm going to edge stitch there uh, with my top stitching thread and then I'm gonna do that fake thing like that, like it's got a zipper there, but it doesn't. So I've finished all the top stitching there and there, and now I'm gonna forget this and work on the back. The back part of these pants are separated into two. So I'm just gonna go ahead, stitch those together, 
there's some notch marks along the way and then I'm gonna just treat the back as one piece after uniting the two back pieces I decided to top stitch them same double row as everywhere else and now I've pinned the uh, yoke here to attach onto the top so that overlock it and then I can unite the back crotch curve so I attach the yoke I've top stitched everything I've top stitched the back crotch as well so I have a completed back after having the back piece ready I'm going to mark my design on my pockets you can see me place the tracing paper on both sides there and you can see the yellow mark that I've got and I've got identical markings on both pockets this way nothing fancy just a few simple marks I'm not that artsy on pockets here you can see they're ready I've already top stitched all around and on the top um, the only thing that's going to unite it to the pants is the edge stitch that I'm going to do there I don't really need more strength than that because I never put things in pockets So this just makes it easier for me like this I've finished all the back. I've attached the yoke. I've done all the top stitching I've sewn on the pockets as you can see and now That the back piece is totally done. I can just throw on the front unite the inseams there Sew up all the inseams and then do the side seams and then attach the waistband. After doing the inseam and the side seams, I've attached on all the waistband pieces, the front and the back on the side seams there, and I've placed them right sides together and pinned them all the way around the top. I'm just going to stitch that together. Then I've got my elastic, which is about 10 centimeters smaller than the waistband, and I've marked the quarters there. Of the elastic on the waistband and now I'm going to use the overlocker to stitch that on at the top that will um, keep it in place here you can see I've already sewn on the elastic on the top and you can see the elastic reaches just at that uh, seam so when I flip this around that elastic won't be bulky or noticeable but it will help the pants stay up um, I've attached the waistband onto the pants you can see the seam allowance is pressed up you can see the inner part of the waistband is on top there. I'm, I'm using this method because it's less bulky. So I'm going to go ahead and pin all that. And then all I have to do is use my stitch in the ditch foot and do that with the waistband. It will make it not noticeable. And by this point, I'm basically done. I just have to sort out the legs and hem. These are the only ready-to-wear jeans that I own. They're black denim. I've had them for like four years already and they're as black as ever. Very good quality. I'll have them forever. I like the width of the bottom. So I'm just going to measure across. This measures 21 centimeters roughly across. I'm going to keep that measurement in mind. Compare it to my Mountain View jeans. I think they're a tad wider. I'm going to um, try them on inside out, pin where I want the tapering to start and then mark that on my jeans. I've tried my pants inside out and I've put pins there on both sides and this just marks where I want to start tapering. So up to here I'm quite comfortable with how this fits around the knee. So this, these pins are about mid knee sort of thing. And I'm going to measure the pants at the bottom from one stitch line to the other and they measure 22 and a half. So I don't have to taper them in that much. Um, I'm just gonna draw a line there and probably take out a centimeter per side, yeah. So I'm gonna take out a centimeter there, a centimeter there, make the line, do the new stitch line, overlock again, and then I'm gonna be happy with the width of these pants. I don't like back stitching, so you can see they have left the strand loose and now as I'm finishing this hem, I go really slowly until I'm right at the place to meet where the stitch started and then I just leave another loose thread hanging. Um, I have a needle that has a huge hole on the top, usually I can thread them both together. If I can, I just do it separately, but you can see me thread both of them together there and then with that needle, I just push that over to the other side and with the threads that I used on the bobbin thread, which in my case is navy, um, I just tie a knot. And I've done this everywhere where there's top stitching here, especially around the crotch front fly fake one. Um, I just don't like back stitching on denim. I just don't like it. So I do this. And you can't even tell, like, where is it? There's like, yeah. In there to keep them, you know, up. 
<laughs> and the pockets, um, I had to raise them up by an inch. So they were slightly lower. For me, they looked lower, like below my, my, my bottom. So I raised them up a tad. I didn't go crazy with the top stitching on the pockets. I just did the boring, you know, I, I've got no interest. I, I don't think I could achieve a nice design here. I'm not artsy like that, you know, for sewing. Uh, everything's top stitched. Um, there's a back seam here all the way down. And I think it could help people achieve a better fit. Um, for me, it's basically just a design line. It doesn't um, make the pants fit better or worse on me. They look fine. I don't mind that that seam is there. I actually like it. And because I like, I liked it, I top stitched it there, <laughs> you know? Uh, I wanted to make it like a focal point there on the pants. I didn't top stitch the side seams or the inseams. I didn't do that top stitch there on the, on the pocket either because I just didn't want to do it. Um, yeah, super happy, the fake front fly. <laughs> so easy to do, I just drew it and then just top stitched it. And inside, it actually even has uh, extra fabric there to give it that thickness to make it look like it's really like a fly thingy, but it's not, you know? So I think if you're like out and about in the street, no one's gonna know. And I'm never gonna be tucking anything in. I'm never gonna tuck in, you know, uh, blouses or tops inside pants. So the fact that they have a really thick supportive waistband is all cool with me. I'm very pleased with these pants although they're not perfect uh, I think I could tweak the front crotch curve and make it a bit more customized to me so yeah if, if you want to make your first pair of jeans and you want an easy pair that looks like jeans but without the fuss you know yeah I recommend this pattern anyhow let me know if you've made it uh, if you're planning to make it the link is down below in the description box it's not an affiliate link it's just a link to 